Okay, we are ready for test flight number five. So far, this project has gone very well indeed. I, I don't have any complaints. The only thing that, uh, that I'm working on now is getting my roll rate snappy enough for my taste and symmetrical roll speed to the left and to the right, and I'm almost there, very, very close. So I want to take it out today and do another test flight on it. I've made an adjustment on my differential setting on my ailerons, so we'll see if I hit the mark this time. Um, if I do, I will be golden on my setup. I haven't talked about my landing skids. I added some landing skids to it. On the front, uh, underneath, I added a little uh, EPP foam plate. I had some scrap EPP foam that's about 10 millimeters thick. I used a piece of uh, scrap plastic as a landing skid and then attached a piece of pretty stiff uh, wide zip tie that uh, you know provides the spring for it. So that's worked out pretty well so far. I just have a piece of scrap plastic back here on the tail as a landing skid to keep the control horn, you know, up off the ground. I don't want anything to hit the control horn for the uh, elevator servo. And then um, I just took some thin zip tie material and embedded those in the bottom of the wing. What I wanted to do was make sure that I had clearance from the ground for these uh, five inch props. And as you can see, I've got, I've got clearance for these five inch props. So that worked out really, really well. It's the same type of landing skid system that I put on my, I think I've got the same type of landing skid system on my Volantex Phoenix V2 Sport Fighter and also on my um, Zeta Ultra Z Blaze EDF jet. And this type of landing skid system for where I have to land a, the terrain where I have to land has worked out really, really well. And it adds, you know, when, it, when you come down and you land, it adds some cushion, you know, some shock absorption. I did a video not too long ago on my landing skid systems, a couple of different types of landing skid systems that I've created that have worked out really well. So I'm continuing with that. They, they've proven to be very good landing skid systems. They provide shock absorption and they've proved to be very durable. So. So anyway, I wanted to mention that. So if anybody you know has to land in uh, a hard surface like I have to land on, those work out really well. And like I said, there's a video dedicated to my landing skid system. So anyway, let's go out to the field and throw it in the air for test flight number five and see if we can finally get that roll rate completely symmetrical, get this set up golden. I'll see you out there. Okay, I am ready for flight number five. I have run out of my 2S GNB 550 milliamp ADC lipos. So now I have a 2S 660 milliamp hour 30C lipo in it. So about two, two and a half grams heavier than the batteries that I, you know, selected for this, but. Um, yeah, I've run out of those, so we're going to see how this works out. Okay. Get my canopy on here. Get my transmitter. Uh, make sure that we're correcting. All right. So I got it in full stabilization mode for lunch. I have it pretty well tuned out. I want to test my roll rate again. Um, I've been playing around with the differential on the ailerons. Last time I had it up, I had a really good roll rate on the left, a little slow on the right. So I took some of that differential out. We'll see how that works. Launching. Okay, so I launched that at 50% throttle. Since I got a little heavier battery in it, it was a little nose heavy to begin with, with the, the 550s. Okay, so we got it in wind mitigation mode now. 
Back out the throttle a bit. Okay, so let's go over here and test our roll rate to the left. That's pretty good. I can live with that. We'll come back around. We'll test it to the right. And the reason I like doing this in a single direction is because I got that big ball of fire behind me, yeah? Okay, so try it to the right. Oh, that is so close. I can't... I couldn't tell. Was it faster to the right or faster to the left? I kind of thought it was faster to the left. Let's try that again. I may have to take out all my differential. All right, let's try it to the left again. Yeah, I think... Whoa! What the heck happened there? Yeah, RF signal is critical. It just flipped over and headed down toward the ground. And I had it in uh, wind mitigation mode on the gyro. I don't know what the heck happened there. Let's see what kind of damage we got. Alright, let's see. Ejected the canopy. Let me unplug this battery. <clears throat> well, everything was going so smoothly. I don't know if you watched the video that I posted on the issues that I ran into when I was doing this conversion, but I had two component failures. One of the 1306 motors that I planned on using on this had a bad bearing. And then the 4 gram servo I planned on using on the elevator was intermittent, so I had to replace it and go with my backup motors. And now, I don't know what happened there. Um, it just, as soon as I completed that left roll and straightened it back up, all of a sudden it bounced and rolled upside down and then just nose down into the ground. Now, um, it still had power. It wasn't a power issue that caused it. So I know the, the ESCs, the voltage regulator, were working fine. Uh, my money is either on the receiver or on the gyro. Now, I had it in wind mitigation mode, so I don't know why, if it was the gyro, why the gyro would flip it upside down in wind mitigation mode. You know, so, so I don't know what was going on there, but it was not good. I, I couldn't believe when I went and I picked it up out of the scrub, other than having to pull some burrs and needles out of the foam, it was still all in one piece. I've looked over it pretty closely once I got back here, and I can't, I couldn't find any damage to the plane other than you know, all those plants out there in the desert, they've all got needles, they've all got burrs, and they're all very rigid. You know, they don't give very much. So it just, it scratched up the foam on the nose. It perforated the foam in places, you know, from the needles and the burrs that I had to pull out. But it didn't rip the foam. It didn't, it didn't break the foam. I thought surely once I got out there, that this canopy was going to be completely broken off because it hit it hit hard. It happened so fast I didn't even have time to react to it because I didn't have a lot of altitude at the time. I thought for sure that this entire front of this canopy was going to be broken off of this plane since it hit those first. Now I, I did not reinforce this canopy with with carbon. I thought about doing that. I've done that to my other uh, gliders and I've also done it to my EDF jets because that is the weakest spot. But because I mounted in uh, a plastic battery shelf with four screws and I thought that would probably be rigid enough that I won't need to add carbon to it and so apparently that worked out. Luckily but um, the airframe seems to have come back unscathed. I, can't, I couldn't find any damage to it whatsoever. 
but before I take it out again, I'm going to remove this receiver and I'm going to remove the gyro. I'm going to put a standard four or six channel receiver in it. And I'm just going to be flying it in full manual mode for a while. I don't want that. I don't want that to happen again. Um, if, if I can diagnose which one of the two it was, the receiver or the gyro, because everything on this is brand new. The motors, the ESCs, the voltage regulator, the receiver, the gyro, uh, all the servos except for the five grand servo I put on the elevator. That was the only used component that I put on here. Even the props are brand spanking new. I took everything out of the original packages when I put this together. So, the, unfortunately, this is one of those projects that has been cursed from the very beginning. And everything was going so darn smoothly. And on a, on a positive note, did you see how quickly, I mean, it had a not very nice roll rate to the left, and then when it rolled to the right on its own inverted, did you see how quickly it rolled to the right? So, there, there's a silver lining there. It looks like my... My rolls are nice and snappy and symmetrical to the left and to the right. That was the only positive thing that came out of this test flight. But um, I will have it back in the air as soon as I can in full manual mode with just a standard receiver and see if I can hook that hook this receiver up to something else, you know, to a to a bank of uh, servos with that with that same gyro and see if I can get it. To do something weird, you know, on the on a test stand to try and determine which one of the two it is. I don't want to put a gyro back in it until I know that that was not a gyro issue. So, so anyway, um, it didn't turn out the way I hoped. I'm glad that it came back undamaged, so that it's going to go in the air again, and um, hopefully that is the last gremlin that I'm going to have to squash on this project. So stay tuned, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.